Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the Beta FPV's Pavo 25 V2. It is a 112 millimeter carbon fiber frame, DJI O3 air unit, and various other HD VTX mountable, and also action camera mountable, six to eight minutes of flight time, rocket engine inspired duct design, two and a half inch cine hoop. So taking a look at the frame, we have two carbon fiber plates sandwiching the single piece solid plastic ducted prop guard frame. So on the top, we have the pre-riveted carbon fiber top plate. Thickness is 2.5 millimeters. And here is the carbon fiber bottom plate. Thickness is 1.5 millimeters. And here is the ducted prop guard plastic frame sandwiched in between. Now they are mounted together via the CNC 7075 Y-shaped aluminum standoffs instead of the traditional pillar type standoffs to eliminate bending and distortion during flight which equals two smooth turns and less vibrations. And this is a very solid built frame. And here is the camera mounting plate to mount an action camera and also to mount the FPV camera. As you can see, it is soft mounted. The Pavo 25 V2 is capable of accommodating a digital HD VTX, such as the DJI O3 Air unit, for the FPV and thus HD video recordings. So there's no need for an action camera, but you can always add an action camera. You can also use an analog VTX as well. So you can enjoy the Pavo 25 V2 without the high cost of HD VTX, like the DJI O3 Air unit, and use any analog VTX and a camera combo. And mount your lightweight action camera that you may already have, such as a naked GoPro 12, DJI Action 2, or InstaGo 3 for the HD video recordings. Now here's something a little different. The X-T30 connector is soldered together to a mounting plate and then screwed on to the top plate instead of it dangling from the positive and the negative battery pads, preventing damage to the flight controller board if the battery gets pulled out with force, like in a crash situation. It will simply get unplugged instead of pulling on the solder joints on the battery pads. Now this is really nice and it also allows you to plug in the battery and remove the battery with just one hand. Now, this innovation could become widely accepted and become the standard way to mount any battery connector. So mine came with a weak solder joint on the X-T30, so it was reinforced with a little bit more solder. So always check your solder joints. Now, right below it is a 3D printed antenna mount for the VTX, which also houses the externally mounted ELRS receiver and its antenna. Looks like the mini nano ELRS receiver with the white T antenna and the antenna and the receiver fits in there perfectly. So this flight controller is not one of those SPI receiver built-in flight controllers. So it will give you the full range of the externally mounted receiver that is being used and not limited to the range of an SPI receiver. The battery strap holder is mounted onto the frame as well. They are made out of the same hard plastic material like the ducted plastic frame and it looks and feels solid and strong, and it is very well made. And we have the anti-slip battery pads pre-installed. So it is a pusher style setup with the upside down motors, so there's no air restriction on the bottom where it actually matters. Now it has small protrusions 
as landing gears and provide very little clearance. So do not land in dirt or grass. Land somewhere that is nice and flat and smooth. Now the props are the Gemfan D63 tri-bladed props with the two screws. And the actual motors are the 1505 4600 kV motors and they are the Beta FPV in-house branded motors. Contrary to the website's 1506 4200 kV motors, just four screws will remove the bottom plate and we can get direct access to the flight controller. Now the flight controller is the F722 35 amp all-in-one V2 brushless flight controller. It has six full UARTs available. It has the six pin plug and play for the DJI 03 air unit. So there is no soldering involved. It has 35 amp BL Heli 32 ESCs built in, 60 megabytes of flash memory for the black box logging and processing speeds of up to 128K PWM frequency. So with the four screws removed and the bottom plate removed, we can then work our way to removing the plastic ducted frame. Now it takes a little while to remove it, but once removed, you can get full access to the flight controller. So we have the receiver pads with the ELRS receiver already soldered on, and we had a three pin connector for the LED light strip already prepped, which was removed because I'm not going to be using any LED lights. We have a Rubicon 25 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor soldered onto the battery pads directly. And there's the micro USB port to connect to Betaflight configurator. Now there's enough space, but I couldn't find a working data cable to fit, so the motor had to be removed to connect the micro USB cable. And that is the reason why I just have one screw holding the motor in place, so I can easily remove the motor and work on my flight controller with the beta flight configurator. Okay, so here we are in beta flight, connecting the quadcopter, the USB, and there we go. So first things first, if you scroll down and go to CLI and type in dump and hit enter, you have the factory settings for the Pavo 25. So you can go ahead and highlight it and save it to a note and you will always have that copy of the factory settings. But the product page also provides a link to the factory CLI dump files as well. So you are safe if you don't copy and paste it to a note. But you may want to save the dump files once again after you make changes to the flight controller as well. So you can have both the before and after. So I'm gonna type in exit, enter to get out. And with the quadcopter on a flat level surface, you wanna calibrate the accelerometer here. Next, go into the ports. So in the ports tab, we have UART 6 for the ELRS receiver and UART 2 for the DJI air unit. So you would turn this off if you are using an analog VTX and turn on the UART that you are using and choose the VTX protocol. So next is the configurations tab. Now here you need to make sure that the rotation of the board is set to 270 degrees clockwise flip, just like how it is right here. And there's the craft name. You can also put the pilot name if you want. Yeah, all looks good. Now I'm gonna turn off the LED strip because I removed the LED dongle and I'm not going to be using the LED strip 
and also I'm going to turn off air mode and that is because I want air mode on a toggle switch on the remote controller so that is just about it here I'm going to save and reboot okay so let's go back to the configurations and the changes have been saved power and battery that looks all good and fail safe is set to drop that is good presets there's a bunch of presets here I've never used one of these so I'm not sure how to do that but you can go ahead and choose the tune for a specific quadcopter and setup and you can run it like that or you can use the factory tuning that they provided and looks like they did a lot of tuning here so I'm going to use it just like that and let's see the rate profile okay the rate profile is pretty low as well but we'll check it out and fly it with the factory settings and then make changes if there needs changing so next is the receiver tab here's the serial UART for the receiver mode and crossfire is correct for the serial receiver provider uh, nothing's going to be happening right now because I don't even have it bound yet but that's the receivers tab and the modes tab here I want to make some changes so to arm yep auxiliary one angle mode auxiliary two actually on the bottom of the switch now beeper is on aux 3 that's correct air mode is on aux 2 and now I want to go all the way up and flip over after crash is on aux 4 and user on aux 5 user I'm not sure what this is it could be for the LED lights so I'm not going to be using that so I'll turn that off so I have everything set up just the way I like it so I'm gonna go ahead and save and there you go and adjustments servos I don't need to do anything there the motor that looks good now the OSD here we go so I'm gonna go ahead and make some changes to the OSD in a little bit um, battery average cell voltage looks like that would be this one right here I'll leave it in that corner and fly minutes let's see fly minutes I'll leave it right there Pavo 25 V2 I'll leave it right in the middle on the top stick position I believe that's what that is I'll leave it there and LQ RSSI and the stick mode I'm not sure what this is so let's scroll down current drawn okay so this is the current so I'll leave it right here and battery usage battery voltage so this will be the battery voltage complete all the cells so basically that's about it yeah okay so I'm good here so I'm gonna go ahead and save let me go ahead and raise this up and I believe I used to have the uh, the modes on this side so I'll leave it over there and usually I have the VTX right here but we don't need to put that because we're using the DJI 03 air unit now I can go ahead and save but let's see 
warnings pulse flight stats battery current drawn maximum battery ma use and i'll put the battery voltage battery voltage minimum black box number i don't use black box so i'll turn that off and black box usage i'll turn that off and rssi dbm minimum and timer two okay that's good and i'll hit save now since you have made all the changes now is the time to go to the cli and hit dump dump and hit enter so you can always come back to this particular setting that you want it so in the cli dump you can find out what the board is and also the version of the firmware that is installed and the time that it was installed you can also scroll right here on the top and you can find out the version as well and what kind of board it is as well copy it and we're going to save that to a notepad there we are so I'm going to type in EXIT, hit enter. We're back to the main setups page, and I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the quadcopter from Betaflight. Next up, connecting it to the ELRS web user interface via Wi Fi. So power on the quadcopter and wait for one minute. Fast flashing LED light means that Wi-Fi is on. So connect to the Wi-Fi with your laptop. Takes a little while, but here's the web UI. And we can see that it has the LBT firmware, so it definitely needs to be updated. So open up the ELRS configurator, choose the firmware, Choose your device. The device category is Beta FPV 2.4 GHz and the device is Beta FPV Nano RX. Choose your flashing method. I'm going to choose Wi Fi. Enter the binding phrase if you have one and choose the flashing option. I'm going to go ahead and build and then flash it and update the firmware. And now we should be able to bind automatically since the quadcopter and the remote controller has the same binding phrase. So let's power it up. Telemetry recovered. There you go. Success. Okay, so here we are, beta flight once again. Connecting the quadcopter. Okay, so let's go down to the receivers tab. And there we are, turning on the remote controller. Welcome to HTX. Okay, nothing is happening because there's no battery plugged in. So let's go ahead and plug in the battery. And there we go. We got connection, so channel mapping is incorrect here, so I need to change it to TAER1234 and save. And there we go, the quadcopter is still and everything looks like it's working perfect. There's my pitch, there's my throttle, roll, and yaw. Okay, that's aux 3 beeper and aux 2 and aux 1. All is working perfect. So let's go on over to the modes tab to make sure 
everything is good so here we go army there you go and angle air mode and let's move down and I guess I don't have auxiliary 4 set up on my remote controller so the flip over after crash is not working at the moment but everything else is working so that's perfect all right we are done here all right so the frame is put back together as well as all of the screws for that one motor is screwed on tight and i got the battery that is provided one of the two batteries that is provided strapped on but as you can see the strap seems to be a little bit short for that particular battery so let's go and check this out i got my zorro radio here elrs so let's go ahead and power it up Okay, this one also has the binding phrase, so automatically binds. So let's see if everything is working. All right. All right. Everything seems to be working. All right. Okay, guys, so here we go. Your basic hover test. So this is without the VTX. I'll be mounting the DJI O3 air unit and testing it out soon. So this is just a basic hover test. Make sure everything is working and we are safe to put the VTX on. Nice. Yeah, it does have a lot of power. There's no extra weight on it. But I'm sure with the DJI O3 air unit, it's going to be a little bit heavier. But it looks like it's got nice power. All right. So that'll do it. nice okay so from here you can install one of those digital vtx units like the dji 03 air unit walk snail avatar pro cadex vista and the run cam link or if you want you can also install an analog vtx and a 19 millimeter camera so on the next video i'll be installing the dji 03 air unit and we're going to do some FPV. So that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.